Friends, folks, it's Woody from Obadiah's Wood Stoves. We are looking at a very interesting stove. It's made in Serbia and by a company called ABC. And this is the Concept 2 Hydro. These are only available through Obadiah's Wood Stoves and nowhere else. This unit is available as a boiler and it's also available just as a normal wood cook stove. I'm going to kind of go over some of the features um, of this cook stove. I'm going to show you what makes it so unique and what makes it so cool, in my opinion. Um, I know the firebox you know, kind of looks small. Actually, it's deceiving. Um, the firebox is much larger than the door. Uh, so, it kind of limits the size of the wood that you can put in it. The oven is a very nice size. Um, that this oven in wood is pretty much the same size as that oven, maybe a little bit wider. And the doors are all cast iron, gasketed. The, wind, the glass is a little different. Um, there is no gasket or no glass. There's just little gaskets on the side and it's just pressed up against it. As far as construction, the way it's built, I'm pretty impressed. Um, top is plate steel, quarter inch. There's a hot plate. It's got reliefs that are laser cut into the cooktop. It's on pretty tight. Now this is not your typical wood cook stove. Folks, this is a boiler, an actual boiler that also has an oven. In Europe, it's very common for a wood cook stove um, to be ordered to heat a home. Um, the cook stove is installed in the kitchen and the heat is extracted from the cook stove and then piped to other areas of the home um, where the heat is needed. And that's a very viable way of doing it. And it's done commonly in Europe. It has multiple, multiple boiler connections on the back. Um, this is a stay type boiler. Um, there are no stays in it though, but it's jacketed. Um, so it's what you would normally see in a commercial boiler. As you can see, the stove itself has a large oven. It's polished stainless steel. Something to consider if you buy a cook stove. You don't want a cook stove with a painted oven. Never buy a cook stove with a painted oven. You can't clean it. If it's porcelain or it's stainless, you can at least keep it clean and sanitary. Very, very important. So. These are my two cents. Um, storage inside is nice. You know, you can throw kindling in there, you can throw whatever, pots, pans, extra stuff. In the kitchen, you can never have too much space. You have the thermostat tells you the water temperature, this tells you the oven temperature. So, you have a control here, and you can uh, turn this dial, and this stove will automatically control the damper within and it will regulate your fire. So it's totally automated, um, very high tech. You have a nice ash pan um, that slides out. Ash and then construction wise, cast iron doors, cast iron frames, welded steel body, sheet metal sides, doesn't have a whole lot of thermal convection. I wish these panels were perforated. Um, I'll talk to the manufacturer and see, they did do it here on the other stove. If we can't get them to open this one up. I'm gonna show you this firebox. I mean, it's extraordinary, in my opinion, being a boiler specialist. Um, to see this thing, actually installed in a wood stove, just like the North that I showed you, uh, the North Hydro. Um, 
this is the hydro version of the Concept 2 cook stove. The Concept 2 has got an interesting firebox in and of itself when it comes um, without the boiler option. Um, what it does is it's fully lined with fire brick. There's double layers at the top, so it's got a reburn. We think it probably would pass EPA. So that gives you a little clue about this company. They're very in tune with efficiency and clean burning. Um, the little stove here, the Concept 2 Mini, is an extraordinary stove. Um, the firebox is very large, very clean burning, very cool cool stove so we think that it would pass EPA so let's get back to the boiler um, what we're looking at here is a completely lined water jacket I mean all the way around so you can see the thickness this is lined with water or steel and there's water inside it there's water flowing through here all the way around through this tube it goes all the way down so you've got a lot of surface area in here to absorb the infrared rays from the coal or the wood that's in there that's burning. So, and then what happens is the hot water that's being produced in your firebox comes out the back of the stove, goes through a hydronic system, which would be, you know, your pumps and the normal type of a system that we would install for a home heating system. The thing that you have to understand is, you know, this system works very well. You're going to need a couple things. You need water storage, so you need a thermal battery. So when it's running, it's going to put the energy into some sort of thermal tank, and then your heating system will pull back from the tank. Um, unless you're going to run your stove 24-7 and then it's going to get really hot in your kitchen. So usually the way it work is you'll fire your stove, a load of wood, bring your hot water tank up to temperature. Rule of thumb is if you have a thousand square foot house, you need probably 500 gallon water tank um, to get really any thermal benefit. This size boiler would take a 500 gallon tank, no problem. And that acts like a, uh, a battery and basically you have a generator so you fire the generator it runs puts you know the BTUs into your battery which is your hot water tank and then you have your thermostat you're calling for water hot water in your floor um, and then a pump kicks on and it circulates the hot water through the floor now you have to put a tempering valve in because if you have in-floor radiant heat you shouldn't want to be running 140 degree water through it the thing about you have to understand on heating systems is the most efficient way to go is in-floor heat, in my opinion. The reason being is water temperatures are very low. Typically, in my other house, my water, my floor temps are 102, 104. The water going through the floor is somewhere around oh, 112. Um, if I have thermal storage I have to be able to store that hot water I can't take it above 212 um, at sea level unless it's under pressure um, and then we have an explosion risk so in order to store my BTUs in a thermal battery at 200 degrees let's say and I'm pulling my BTUs out I want to be able to go as low as I can possibly go and still utilize my heat. So if we're doing radiant um, baseboard, it's gonna be a different story. Um, you're gonna run 140 to 160 degrees through that baseboard, depending on how efficient what year the baseboard is. Um, the newer baseboards take require less temperature for them to work because they're more efficient. Um, if you've got one that is, you know, runs at, let's say, 150 degrees, that means you can only pull 50 degrees out of your thermal battery before you're out of heat. It doesn't work anymore. Because once you get below the threshold of 150 degrees, it's not hot enough. So it doesn't keep your house warm enough. So now the temperature drops and you're freezing in your house. 
So hopefully you can understand this. I'm not trying to make things too complex, but these are the way, you know, the facts of how hydronics work in a house. Forced air is another animal altogether. You have to have a coil, picture the radiator in your car, which is dissipating the heat from the engine. Same kind of thing. We put a radiator in what's called a plenum, which is a big box that sits on the furnace. So now you have this big box on the furnace and that's where all the ductwork goes all over your house. Inside that, you have an A coil for your air conditioning. It's called HVAC. So on top of the A coil, we put another coil, which looks like a car radiator, and we're pumping hot water through it. Um, the problem is air is inert. It's gas. It does not transfer heat because um, it's a gas. It's inert. Um, so you have to understand that. And you don't get a good transfer rate out of air. So trying to take the BTUs from this boiler and putting it into the air is very inefficient, um, very inefficient. So you have to run it at high temperatures, 180. Um, so I would tell you if you have forced air, forget it. You're wasting your time, honestly, um, with this kind of system. If you're doing um, radiators, baseboard, yeah, probably not such a great idea. If you got in-floor heat and you have a slab, or something like that, you have thermal mass, this is a great, great setup for you. Now if you wanted to do domestic hot water, what you would do is you would come out of the system and you would go into a fin plate heat exchanger or a side arm heat exchanger on the side of a hot water tank. Um, if you had like a fin plate, you could do like an on-demand hot water heater. So there's different ways to do that as well. If you have a water storage tank, then you would do a sidearm heat exchanger and that would heat the water in your tank. All this stuff we can cover when you purchase your stove from Obadias. We handle everything for you. We explain everything. Um, we have all the parts to do all the installation. We even have installers that will travel to you to do the install. So if you can afford it. So. There you go. This is Woody from Obadiah's and uh, hopefully I've covered everything that you would ever want to know about using a wood stove to heat hot water, be it domestic hot water or hydronics to heat a house or a shop or any other structure. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been helpful and if we can do anything else for you, let us know. Thank you.